Good evening, family. A uh, very warm welcome to Flock House Bible class, Flock House Bible study. Uh, this is the Saturday, 8 of July, 2023. And we'd like to thank God for another opportunity to gather again. Thank you, everyone, for connecting. God uh, bless you. And uh, for everyone who is also trying to uh, get used to the new platform, we salute your courage and how you've been able to uh, move into this um, new platform, manage the transition. Thank you. And God bless you. It's going to be another great time of learning. And then before we commence uh, this class, I want to just say a word of prayer. And if you permit me, I'd like to pray for us. Please let us pray. Father, we thank you. We give you praise. We acknowledge you as the giver of life and the sustainer of breath. We acknowledge that we are nothing without you. We thank you for the life that we have. Thank you for the air we breathe. Thank you for the opportunity to know you. And thank you also for the grace that has kept us in you. We thank you for the things happening around the world. Thank you for you are the reason why everything is still going in the direction of your will. We know. Because the Bible says, for all things works together for good. For they that love the Lord and are called according to your purpose. Thank you, Father, because it's going to get better. Thank you, Father, because the world is going to come to a place where your will will be done on earth as it is in heaven. We want to thank you for this gathering tonight. Thank you for everyone who's joined the call. Thank you for our facilitator, Dr. Peter Ozodo. Thank you, for, Father, for the leadership of Flock House Ministries. Thank you for everyone that is also connected to this call. Because tonight you will help us to learn and to receive from your, from, from your throne. Father, we ask in the name of Jesus that as the teachings proceed, as the conversation continues, you will open every eyes to see, open every ear to hear, and open every heart to gain understanding. Let your word be planted and let it produce results in our lives. We come against any interference, any interruption, any resistance in the realm of the spirit. We clear the airwaves. We take authority over the galaxies, the system, the spheres, the stratosphere, hemisphere, realms, regions, and domains. And we declare in the name of Jesus that the will of the Lord will be done in this space right here and right now in Jesus' mighty name. And everybody will declare a big amen. 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 All right, we're going to be handing over to Dr. Peter. For those of you connecting uh, to this call for the very first time, thank you so much. We celebrate you. You must know that you are a VVIP today, very, very important person. Thank you for connecting and God bless you. So, by, by the way, uh, Dr. Peter Ozodo is our facilitator, our main facilitator, major facilitator for the Bible uh, class that we have every Saturday. So in no moment you'll be seeing his face and you'll be hearing his voice. We just want to encourage you, this is a new platform. We're still also uh, trying to get used to it, but we want to just encourage you as much as you can. Leave your mic, mic uh, muted until you are told to do so. At the end of Dr. Peter's session, again for tonight, you'll be given the opportunity to ask questions, to uh, make your submission, contribution, whatever it is that you want to say, you'll be given that opportunity. So when that time comes, we would alert you and we also, you know, nudge you to uh, um, unmute your mic and then uh, share. Feel free, um, as it pertains to uh, what Dr. Peter will be sharing tonight, you can ask question. And if you have any other questions too that pertains to any aspect of life, uh, Bible, just go ahead and ask our facilitator. God is graced him. He has a uh, mileage of, uh, he's gathered so much of ministry mouths and then God is giving him wisdom to attend to those uh, questions. 
Thank you so much, everyone. So just uh, uh, brace up. Uh, we're about to receive Dr. Peter. And without wasting any further time, we'd like to uh, bring uh, Dr. Peter right here and right now. Good evening, Uncle. It's always refreshing to have you take us through this journey every Saturday. Thank you so much for all you do. We celebrate you, sir. Good evening, and thank you, Brother Mike. Thank you so much, everybody. Um, we welcome you all to this platform and to today's class. We have been trying for the past three or four weeks just to define marriage, just to say what is marriage. And um, that has taken us uh, uh, just one verse from scripture uh, has taken us these three weeks to three or four weeks to unpack. And uh, that scripture is uh, Genesis 2:24, 2, uh, where this, the Bible says, um, uh, the man will leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife and the two shall become one flesh um and i think we concluded that definition uh last week uh, for now we will go on to look at what we'll consider the purpose of marriage Right, so we'll start right away. Uh, the question is, what then is the purpose of marriage? You know, we've seen what marriage is, that it is a question of a man leaving his father and his mother. First of all, it has to be a man, uh, not a boy. Um, and then we we talked about the fact that uh, he leaves his he's uh, he's male, and he is going to join to a female. So we dealt extensively with the gender issue. Uh, then uh, the question of um, join uh, join leaving his father and his mother, departure from home. We dealt extensively with that. Uh, and then we talked about joining uh, himself to his wife, that union, uniting to his wife. We talked a lot about why it's a union and not an addition, and what the differences between the two are, and the cultural implications, uh, particularly for those of us here on the continent of Africa. Right, so um, so now we come to the issue of purpose. Why is it that a man will leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife? Why uh, do they have to do this? And the reason is, is that God has a purpose for marriage. In Genesis, we saw that uh, uh, when, when God created man, he put him in the garden uh, to till it and to take care of it. And when God found that the man was not uh, doing this work satisfactorily alone, he decided to make him a partner. Uh, he says, I'll make him a, a helper suitable for him. So you can see immediately from that scripture that the purpose of marriage has to do more with the, the effectiveness of the man in the role God had given him, or in this case, the, the ineffectiveness of the man in the work God had given him. And therefore God created uh, a partner for him, uh, one that would be suitable for him uh, which implies that it will ha this person has to do with helping him. He says, he will, I'll make him a helper, one that will be suitable for him. So God wanted to create a helper for the man that is suitable for the work he had assigned for the man to do. 
you know you don't get a helper if you are doing well and in any case you get a helper in the context of what your assignment is you don't get a helper outside that context so when they say suitable for him it implies that it's going to be suitable for the work God has assigned for him. For Adam, it was this garden. What is it for us? Uh, somebody's going to have to read for us from Micah chapter 2, verse 15. Micah 2, 15. Uh, <clears throat> let me see who our reader will be now. Micah 2, 15. Aha, uh -huh. I can see Adobe from Ghana. Can you read for us? Micah 2.15. Just unmute and read Micah 2.15, Ada. You you unmute first, so I know you are ready to read. Micah 2 doesn't have 15, sir. It stops at 13. Oh, my goodness. So what have we got there? Uh, where does it talk about the uh, purpose of marriage? Can I quickly check that? I'm sorry okay. if that is so error. Just give me a second. It's Micah 2. Mm, where am I now? Okay. Just a second. The scripture that says uh, that God is looking for uh, Malachi. 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 Pardon me. Malachi. Malachi 2. 15. 15. Okay. I got the scriptures wrong. Malachi 2.15, has not the one God made you? You belong to him in body and spirit. And what does the one God seek? Godly offspring. So be on your guard and do not be unfaithful to the wife of your youth. Okay, so Malachi 2.15 is talking about the fact that there's a purpose uh, for which God created the man and the woman and made them a family. He says, has not the one God made you, that's male and female, you belong to him in body and spirit. And what does the one God seek? What does he seek? godly offspring let me just stop there so the idea is that god is looking for a godly offspring that's the reason why he had made the man and the woman into a family situation in other words that's the reason for creating uh, a home God is seeking a godly seed. The purpose of marriage is therefore, first of all, procreation. Procreation. Uh, that's why he's talking about offspring there. Offspring implies that you have a child. But obviously, it's not in every case that uh, a marriage results in physical procreation. 
if you extend this to the Great Commission, where the Lord says to us as disciples to go make disciples of all nations, baptizing them, uh, teaching them to obey all that he has commanded, baptizing them in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, teaching to obey all that he had commanded. Therefore, this matter of evangelistic and discipleship making purposes enter into the equation. In other words, we can bring not only physical offspring, but marriage can be seen to be purposed to produce spiritual offspring as well. Spiritual offspring. So, one's own seed physically need not be the only, uh, the, the, need not be the limitation to our understanding of the offspring that is talking about in Malachi chapter 2, but we can understand that purpose to include the spiritual off, offspring that we were talking about. In other words, these children that God is looking for need not be the biological children of the couple that we are, we are dealing with. They may well be their spiritual offspring. In fact, when you put all those scriptures together, you will discover that even when the child, I mean, the, uh, the, uh, the, uh, the man and the woman have physical offspring, the responsibility still lies on them to make them spiritual offspring. If that is the case, therefore, we can conclude that the offspring that the Lord is seeking in Malachi 2 is essentially spiritual. And so the purpose of marriage can be said to be that God wants to produce spiritual offspring from the couple concerned is to enhance the effectiveness of the couple in being effective in this work for God that they are required to bond together so as to form a team. Now, if you take football, uh, for example, uh, you can find some players who play very, very well, uh, in fact, who are exceptional. But if you don't put them together in a team, uh, then they, they're not as effective as they should be. Everybody will be playing as an individual, but they don't, they don't harmonize. They don't fit together as a team. The reason the Lord requires that the man be joined or united to his wife is that they will form a spiritual team. Uh, and this team, this idea of a team promotes effectiveness. So, what are we talking about? God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit can be said to be a team, to be a divine team. And that's what gives them the great effectiveness they have. A man who has all manners of giftings, but does not unite to the wife God has given him, cannot be effective in, in the work of producing spiritual offsprings, which is the purpose of marriage. So even when we include the physical offspring, as we just said a moment ago, the major goal is to produce spiritual offspring. Now you will see that this goal, this goal uh, that we have talked about from, from Malachi is very different from the goal the world has for marriage. The purpose of marriage in the world is very, very different 
what is it? Usually in the world, people get married to show that they have come of age. All right, it's almost a symbol of coming of age. Um, a child grows up, goes to school, graduates, gets a job, then obviously the next thing is gets married. And, and, and for them, if you then don't get married at that point, then you you've missed it. You've missed it. Uh, I, I, I have shown, for example, that there are instances where people don't get married for one reason or the other, which we'll we'll look at uh, in the next uh, section. I don't know whether we'll have time to get into it today or whether we'll get into it next week. Depends on how many questions we have uh, at the end of this very brief presentation. So coming of age, that's one reason why some people get married in the world. Second reason is they are free to have sex. All right. So uh, a lot of people see this as, uh, you know, now uh, it's a license to have sex. Um, and uh, since you're not allowed to have sex outside marriage, then of course get married so you can have sex. Now that's not a biblical reason for, for marriage. It's not the purpose of marriage is not to have free sex. Okay. Uh, that's why we, we got into the discussion we had last week about this possibility of raping one's partner in marriage. Uh, usually it's, it's men that rape their wives. Uh, so that's, that's a possibility, you know, uh, but that's because he sees it, as he sees the purpose of marriage as having free sex. It isn't, all right? Uh, the third reason uh, that worldly people get married for is to have company, companionship, companionship. Um, in fact, this has been uh, taken very much on board by, by the church uh, to the extent that the Anglicans, uh, I think, and the Roman Catholics too have included that, uh, in fact, reference that in their order of marriage as the primary purpose of marriage or the initial purpose of marriage for companionship. Uh, when the Bible says in Genesis, uh, which is where they really base this on, uh, they based on the Genesis uh, instruction that it was not good for the man to be alone. Uh, it is not good for the man to be alone. Therefore, uh, God decided to make him a companion. There are two issues with that. The first and the primary issue with that is that when you look at that scripture in context, you will understand that he's not talking about companionship at all. How do I say that? First of all, the scripture there says, uh, um, the Lord God made the man, put him in a garden, to walk it and to till it and to, you know, uh, and then God had also made all the animals uh, and, and uh, they were companions for, for, for the man. So if none of them was suitable for him, all right? But the suitability he's talking about has to be seen in the context of the task that he had given him. The task he gave him was to till the farm, to, to produce from it, to, to, to tend the garden, all right? To tend the garden that God had given him. Uh, so when we are talking, therefore, 
in terms of the purpose for making the man, it has to be seen in, in context of the purpose. Uh, and then, as I said before, uh, there were all these animals also, so they, they could have been his companions anyway, uh, if that was all that was lacking. Maybe we'll talk about that when, when the questions arise a little more. Thirdly, uh, a lot of the reasons in, in the modern world why people get married is to increase their capacity to make money. Okay? Um, uh, and this is one of the reasons why uh, uh, men insist, uh, and women too, well, women for a different reason, but men insist often that their wives must work. And the reason is so that they can uh, double uh, the source of their income and thereby increase their family economy. Uh, marriage is not a money-making venture. And therefore, this matter of increase of the capacity to earn cannot be the purpose of marriage. It can be one of the outcomes, but it cannot be the, the purpose. Cannot be, you know, I, I'm saying this because many times when this business of um, earning income uh, for one reason or the other does not occur, then it becomes a source of a lot of tension in the home. Um, not only when the man is not working, uh, but primarily that, but when the wife is not working, many men find it very, very difficult to cope with that kind of situation. Let me say it again. The increase in the capacity to make money cannot be a biblical reason for getting married. And it's a worldly reason. And because it is a worldly reason, often that is the reason why a lot of marriages fail. And finally, there is this uh, purpose uh, that people see the, the marriage thing to be um, a means of uh, reproduction, uh, having children. And uh, as we have said it clearly enough for us to understand that that cannot be the purpose uh, for marriage. Uh, reproduction is incidental to marriage um, for example god created angels and there are billions and billions of them and there is no evidence in fact there is evidence in scripture that they don't have uh, sexual reproduction uh, they don't reproduce physically like we humans do therefore uh, God could have had another way of effecting growth in human population rather than a physical reproduction, if he chose to. Um, again, because it's a worldly reason for marriage, a lot of marriages collapse on account of the fact that they don't have issues, they don't have children. And that's the thing that they mar got married for. That's the purpose of their marriage. Uh, and so if they don't have children, therefore they consider that the marriage has flopped and it has failed and therefore cannot continue. Uh, again, as I said, <coughs> the uh, godly offspring that God was seeking from the Christian is essentially spiritual not physical. And therefore, if they are unable to have their own physical children, they should uh, aim at having spiritual children. Uh, and even when they have physical children, they have a primary responsibility before God to bring them up in the fear and the knowledge of God. Okay, let me quickly run through the conclusion uh, and then we will have time to ask as many questions as we want to. Uh, as we shall see later, submission is not an easy proposition. All right? 
Now, we are, we, are, we are emphasizing this matter of submission here. Well, I think we'll look at it again later uh, when we get to roles and responsibilities of the man and the woman. But uh, it's critical to the union which makes the two people a team. Submission is what makes it possible for the two to be united, to become one. But as we're saying, it's not easy. It calls for both partners to be spiritually mature and psychologically well-adjusted, not just physical maturity, but spiritual maturity primarily, spiritual maturity. If they're going to be united uh, in all the ways we talked about the other time, united spiritually, united in their economy, united socially, united uh, uh, physically, uh, uh, and, 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 uh, and so on, it will require spiritual maturity. You don't yield to somebody by nature. Human beings are very self-centered. But to yield to another in such a way that you can then unite, you require to be spiritually matured, which means that you are willing and ready to sacrifice yourself, your right. It calls for death to self. And death to self is the highlight of spiritual maturity. But also there is a need for psychological well-adjustment. In other words, it must be well-adjusted psychologically. Uh, I think the one leads to the other, that when you are spiritually matured, you are psychologically well-adjusted. You are not self-centered. You are not self-seeking. You are not demanding for your rights and fighting uh, and, and so on and so forth. You are willing to give up. Uh, that uh, and and that when you do give up, you're right. You are, you don't therefore become depressed. In fact, it brings you joy. But that's only possible with spiritual maturity. Submission is absolutely necessary for the process of form, forming a union between two people. We just said that. Okay. Without it, the union will be very weak. I will not be able to support the couple in their work for God. In fact, they cannot work together. The Bible says in Amos 2.2, 2, can two work together except they be agreed. In that way, their work will produce lasting results. If they are bonded together, if they are united together, um, then they will be able to succeed in achieving this purpose of producing spiritual offspring for God. Okay, let's take a few questions and then if there's time, we'll jump into, uh, we'll start the topic of uh, uh, finding a life partner. Otherwise, uh, we'll conclude it here. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Uh, again, we are grateful. Thank you for the sharing. We celebrate you, sir. All right, so we open the floor for questions. Like I said, uh, feel free to ask as it relates to the current conversation. And if perhaps you have any questions, question rather, that has to do with any other aspects of life, Bible, please also feel free to bring it on. All right, so um, let's take, um, all right, let's take you, sir. Go ahead. Okay, thank you so much, sir, for <clears throat> the perspective. Now, uh, the Lord Jesus made, um, speaking to the Pharisees in Matthew 19, he made it clear that the the, the portrait of marriage from the beginning was what God intended us to follow. And um, in the beginning, we hear him 
blessing them. I said, they should multiply and fill the earth. In Genesis 1, 28, we also see that later on, in Exodus 23, 26, he was saying that um, there shall be no barren amongst you in the land. And we saw consistently um, the way he would bless Abraham and bless Isaac and talk also about their seed. Uh, so, um, and when we look at, take the whole Bible context, we see that women were delayed. There were a lot of delay in bearing children. <clears throat> but there was no barren except Micah, of course, the daughter of Saul, uh, David married. So I don't know the New Testament perspective to this. Uh, of course, Malachi is saying that God was seeking godly offspring. Even then, he will seek both the biological offspring and the godly offspring. So how do we, is it a situation we should just accept if I don't have biological children? Thank you. Um, by you, there's even a more fundamental scripture where it says that children are a blessing from the Lord. Um, therefore, it will be natural to expect to have children. Okay? Uh, but it goes without saying, normally, once people get married and they have a uh, sexual relationship and they're young enough, you will expect them to have children. It's just normal. It's just natural. Occasionally, something happens and they're unable to have children. Now, this is where the problem lies. In the African cultural context, when a woman does not have children, that is ground enough for divorcing her. Okay? Uh, why? The reason is, is because they consider that to be the purpose of marriage. The fundamental reason why you get married is to have physical children. Um, now, let's go back to the, the ones you cited, the, the scriptures you cited, that the Lord said, increase, multiply, fill the earth. Remember that the at that time, humanity was just consisting of that Adam and Eve, or in, in the case of um, Noah, just his family, uh, and then later Abraham, just his family, you know, himself and his wife. Um, so, that command at that time was in the context of a situation where the world was not yet populated, where Israel was not yet populated, okay? Now, the world is populated, all right? In fact, some people are considering it to be overpopulated. So, uh, to what extent does that scripture still, um, uh, can that scripture still be interpreted in that context? Um, you have to be, careful there because uh, then when you then also applied what I've just said about African culture uh, where they see a marriage without a child to be a failed marriage uh, then we'll lose sight totally of what the Lord is really implying because uh, the New Testament um, gives us a primary reason for being on earth Mm -hmm. The primary reason for being on earth right now is to bear spiritual offspring. The reason being that if it was just, uh, if that was not our reason for being on earth, there is enough already. Once you're born again, you should be taken to heaven. There, you are doing nothing else here on earth. Just go to heaven because you have, you know, you have, you have fully, fully, fully qualified to go to heaven. 
simply by being born again. You don't need any other achievement or attainment to go to heaven except that you're born again. You're already born again, you should go to heaven. But you're not going to heaven yet. Why? Because God is seeking for spiritual offspring. Children. That's why he said, go make disciples of all nations. Okay? Right. I hope that answers your question. Yes, sir. Uh, the, the other thing I want to know on that question uh, is uh, could there be a reason for delay in some cases? Because we see uh, Isaac praying for his wife. Yes. God had made a promise, but Isaac had to pray. And we see Hannah in her case also. She had to, to really pray. And only when they prayed that God answered. Would there be also a reason for why some of it is delayed? There, there definitely will be. When, when, uh, some of these could be biological, uh, health-related, um, sometimes even psychological, uh, and so on and so forth. Um, uh, and when the people get properly well-adjusted spiritually and psychologically, uh, then they can have children. It, this happens very often. Um, secondly, um, I, I forgot what I wanted to say secondly, but uh, the point you were making is, yes, 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 I now remember. That there are many people or some people, several people in the scriptures who did not have children on time. Uh, and... Uh, when you then have them have children, you find that these children are often very special children. All right? Yes, In other words, God, God delays for the purpose of bringing this particular child that he wants to use in a particular way. First, one good example is Elizabeth, the mother of John the Baptist. Right, it's a long delay. Uh, the mother of Samuel in the Old Testament is another example where there was a long, long delay, and they prayed and cried to the Lord uh, before the Lord eventually gave them a child. Many, many times, even in this day and age, uh, when there is a delay in childbearing, very often that child that comes is a special child. Okay. Mm. Thank you, sir. My last question would be on marriage for sex. Yes. First uh, Corinthians seven two says that because of sexual morality, yeah, everybody should have his wife and every wife should have her husband. Yeah. So in the case of the Corinthian church, there was sexual a lot of sexual morality, and Paul was permitting them to marry to avoid that. Yes. Could that be relevant? That's relevant to Corinth. Um, I would not personally recommend that at all in our day and age. I would say to the people, get your acts together. Be spiritually matured. That is what keeps you from sexual immorality. Um, if you go into marriage because you think that that will stop you from sexual immorality, you will surprise yourself uh, because mm -hmm. very often uh, you have not yet dealt with the cause of this immorality in your heart. Uh, and, and, and then you begin to discover that uh, uh, just because you got married, you are not satisfied with your wife alone. You begin to look for others. Uh, and that's the cause of infidelity in the home is because people have not dealt with the primary issue. You cannot go and get married simply because uh, you, know, you, you have sexual orgies that uh, tend to make you uh, promiscuous. Uh, deal with the issue. Deal with the spiritual matter. Then get married for the right purpose. I hope that answers you. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thank you so much, sir. Um, there are some hands up. 
Yes, uh, let's take Adao B. Okoro first, and then we go to Penyu. Adao, be kindly unmute yourself and then ask. Uh, good evening. Good evening, Ada. Good evening from Ghana, everybody. Um, and Uncle, thank you very much for your sharing. Ada, uh, um, good to see you. <laughs> yeah, thank God uh, I had time today. Good. Yes, uh, according to your... Uncle, according to your interpretation of uh, Malachi 215, yes. does it then mean that you cannot have spiritual children until you get married? That's one of my questions. Uh, no, I don't see I don't see the relationship. Um, the effectiveness is the matter. Spiritual effectiveness. I recall uh, when I was uh, leading Capro, and people would come to me and say, uh, "Sir, I want to get married. Uh, I think I've seen my partner. I want to get married." I would tease them, uh, and often I would just say to them, "I'm very surprised you are getting married. I thought you were effective. You know, uh, you are doing very well in in the work. You don't need a helper." You know, get on with it. You know, uh, uh, and uh, and I will show them these scriptures and encourage them to go and think it through uh, to make sure. Because um, as we will see, I think now it will be ne it will have to be next week. As we see in our next presentation, uh, this matter of um, uh, being sure that you are called to marriage in the first place, is often ignored by many people. That's where to start, is to say, am I called to marriage? All right? Uh, you may be made, you might think you are made for marriage, but marriage may not be made for you. So you, you need to consider that, uh, and as I said, we'll, we'll deal with that next week uh, extensively. So don't, don't let's get discussing that yet. So, back to your question. The ability to help, uh, to, to, to relate with somebody up close, uh, somebody that may offend you, somebody that might step on your toes several times, somebody that uh, sometimes you will even say, oh, why did I even marry? You know, uh, that enhances your spiritual maturity. I'm certain that you will agree with me that since you got married, you have had to grow more spiritually in order to yes. with the relations. Yes. That's right. Uh, and that your growth, that your spiritual growth enables you to be more effective in the service of God. That's why marriage uh, 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 produces spiritual offspring. Okay? Okay, thank you. Um, my second question is on the uh, the um, the reason why the worldly people get married. Yeah, one of the reasons uh, we said it's for companionship, yeah. which we also said that in our churches that's one of the reasons. Uh -huh. Very much emphasized. Uh -huh. yeah. uh, so I'm a bit, uh, <laughs> you know, this is the first time I'm hearing. That yeah. that's not part, you know, because even worldly people they don't have to be married more or less before they are like what practice what is practiced around here. They 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 have the companionship, they live together, but they're not married. Yeah. You know, when yeah. uh, the yes, I got it, I got it. But you mm -hmm. see, um, this they are living together is in uh a loose sense a sort of marriage all right because they're living together all right uh, uh and and the reason they're living together one of them is we i can't stay alone i can't i just i i can't cope alone i need somebody i need you know that kind of thing i'm not by any means saying that that's not achieved in marriages or by marriage it is 
all right? But that's not the primary purpose. That's not the focus. When you go to an Anglican wedding, that's the first thing they read, companionship. God has set this up first for com companionship. And then for sexual, it's, 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 those are not the reasons. And when you go down that their list, it says nothing about godly offspring. Okay, so uh, uh, that's why I am emphasizing that point. Um, yeah. Okay. Thank okay? you very much. You're very welcome, Greek brother John. Good evening, Good evening sir. Good evening, Penyo. Um, my question is on the companionship part. If why is it so strong of a desire for us to want companionship if it's not as important as having spiritual children? Okay. Thank you. Uh Thank you. why I hope you are speaking for yourself, not for, uh, <laughs> because you can't speak for more than for yourself, okay? Um, that definitely is the tendency for humans to need company. You don't want to be alone. Uh, why? Uh, because we are social beings. We are created to be in society. and. Uh, society requires uh, that you be more than one person, okay? Uh, but companionship does not necessarily require marriage, is the point I was making. You can have company without being married. You can have company with fellow men, and, you know, uh, you can have non-sexual company with other people, all right? And that's, that will provide and satisfy your com com companionship need. But it does not address the purpose for which marriage was created, which is what we were looking at in Micah. Which, by the way, is not only in, in Malachi, but it's not only in Malachi, but that also agrees with uh, Genesis chapter 2, why God created Eve for Adam. Okay. Does that answer your question? Thank you. God bless you. Thank you, sir. Uh, I can't see any other question. Please indicate if you want to ask a question. Yeah, why are you so why are you so low? We no. can't hear you. Uh, a call has been interrupting my oh, device. Okay. So, All right. Now, very good. Now we can hear you clearly now. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, sir. Uh, so I'm, I'm saying that if you have, if there's anyone who wants to ask a question, please let us know. Otherwise, we'll just continue. Uncle, I don't think there are any more ends raised. Okay. So let me um, send the other. In uh, link to so you can have it projected as well. Mm. Well, Uncle, you, you want it for today or for next no, I meeting? Thought, I thought you wanted us to continue. Uh, I think we can stop here for today. For, okay. All right. Um, probably then we can start again next. Uh, All right. Yeah. The next topic will be finding a life partner. So that will be very important for single people. So yeah, invite all your single friends to come along. And there are many here already, but oh, yes. <laughs> it's exciting. All right, thank you so much, sir. Again, we had a great time learning and receiving all of this. And I know 
it will be your delight to see that all you are sharing with us find um, expression in our various uh, lives and in different aspects of our lives equally. Thank you, sir. God bless you. More strength, more grace to your elbow. The Lord will increase you in wisdom, more anointing. And also, as you are blessing us every week, I mean, every weekend, we pray that God will also meet you at the point of your need. God will also send you helpers of destiny. God will also send you um, people that you also need in your life to facilitate the things that you trust in God for. We celebrate you and um, God bless you in Jesus' name. Um, all right. I don't know if uh, the media team uh, has uh, a, a music for us, a song for us rather, to end the meeting. Uh, before, yeah, so after we take the uh, final song for tonight, if there are any, if there is any, I beg your pardon, I'll request uh, Mama Moyo, Mama Moyo, to kindly uh, close the meeting for us with a prayer. If um, you are available, Ma, please kindly request that you close Can you hear the me? Yes, Ma, loud and clear. Yes, let us pray. Father, we are very grateful for your word to us this evening. Lord, this issue of marriage, it is only you that can help us. And so, Lord, we pray that all that we have had this evening, you will let them be established in our hearts, O oh God. Lord, I pray that we have ears that hear and hearts that understand your word. And so, Lord, we ask that our lives shall not remain the same again. Thank you for the knowledge you have imparted to us today. So, Father in heaven, we pray that the Holy Spirit will follow us. Like you say, the Spirit we teach you all things. The Holy Spirit will follow us to understand. And Lord, the Holy Spirit will help us also to share it with others. Lord God of heaven, help us, help us, help us that people getting married will have the right purposes of marriage. Lord, that marriage will not lead any of us into error or into sin or seeking to marry. So, Father, we pray that you keep us safe till next week when we hear more of this, your word. Be with the Flock house, oh God, be with everybody there. Let your anointing continue to flow through them. Let your knowledge continue to pass through them to others. Blessed be your holy name, oh God. And dismiss us with your blessings as we go to our different places. Lord, that next week we shall come rejoicing to hear you again. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank amen. you so very much, Ma. We celebrate you. Thank amen. you also for always releasing um, Uncle Peter for us every weekend to bless us. It's been a blessing and we know it's also with your support. Thank you so much, Ma. We celebrate you. All right. Thank you, everyone, for joining the call. We keep getting better on this new platform. It's, um, it's a learning call for most of us. And so we believe that uh, by next week, we would have um, improved even so much better. So thank you for connecting to night. If it's afternoon where you're connecting from or morning, whatever time it is, thank you for joining this Bible class for uh, this day's edition. God bless you. We'd like to just dismiss us right now.
or not without um, the presence of the Lord going with us. So we meet next week, um, Saturday, same time. Please do well to to pass the message across. You heard doctor said it. Um, the conversation is going to help a lot of single people too. So if you know any single pe- people in your uh, circle, cycle of influence, do spread the news to them so that they can connect and get blessed. Hallelujah. All right. Thank you, everyone, for connecting. We have, we have a song to share. So just one okay. song. One song to share. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Go ahead. Thank you so much. Indeed, God is our ever-present helper. And whatsoever we're going through, we should always remember that he's right there for us. He's right there with us. All we need to do is to open our hearts and receive the help that he you know, brings our way no matter what we're going through or what we are expecting from him. Now, someone is asking for the title of the song, so, media, could you quickly help um, attend to that inquiry before we close the meeting? So, I hope you can get that response quickly before we close the meeting. All right, thank you so much. I've uh, spent um, uh, a time. Brittany Cole songs. You don't okay. have to walk the world alone. Brittany oh. Cole. Brittany oh. Cole. Brittany Cole. Brittany Yes, yes. Okay. Okay. All right. So I hope, yeah, that's it. That's it. So it's right there on the comment um, section. It's right there on the comment section. So pick it and then, yeah, I think that answers your inquiry. So would you like to say something before we end the meeting for tonight? Would to wish you happy birthday. (laughs) May the Lord bless you. Amen. That you are free to take your course and uh, also to enjoy the, the meat that uh, <laughs> Boy Panda was busy eating in Zambia. Boy Panda, we, we caught you eating that meat. Thank you. And, uh, we appreciate everyone. And that would be thank you for coming today. God bless you. Greet Ghana for us. And tomorrow, uh, we are so grateful you could be behind Uncle Peter and pray that powerful prayer for us. We're so grateful. And every other person who is here for the first time, Tato, all of you who are still around, thank you so very much. May the peace of the Lord go with you in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 All right. Bye, everyone. We'll see you next week, Saturday, by the grace of God. God be with you. Bye for now. <laughs>